Hey y'all, good to see you as always here on Grassroots Garden. I'm Ryan and today we're out here in the greenhouse. It's uh, November the 10th, I believe it is. I wanna see if we can grow us some big old beefsteak tomatoes during the winter. And we're gonna plant them in nothing but this Stout Ollie's compost. The guy that owns the company brought this bag by Grassroots Garden Center the other day. Told me to try it. He said, just plant directly into this, add nothing else, and we'll have beautiful tomatoes. So he also said that in their composting process, they're evidently near like a, a cotton gin. So they take all the cotton gin waste and then Santee uh, is an area where he's located is like famous for catfishing. So they take all the catfish guts and heads, mix that in their compost. And they said he'd think the cows go down through the windrows eating remnants of the cotton gin. Of course, they're making waste. They're pooping down along the aisles. They take that, incorporate that into there. So it sounds like just a really good, rich compost. It doesn't smell at all. You would think with all those ingredients, you'd have a little odor to it, but it's been composted properly. It looks like good stuff, so let's give it a try. And then somewhere over here, the ladies down at Grassroots grew us some beautiful beefsteak tomatoes. And man, these things are pretty. They're getting a little bit leggy because we've moved all of these plants into the greenhouse, so they're kind of getting shaded out a little bit. So let's go plant them into the, uh, the Mater Maker formula and see what happens. I got my little potting table somewhat cleaned off over here, so I'm proud of myself for doing that. Usually this thing is just a huge mess, but if you remember a few weeks back when I was waiting on that stupid night blooming cactus to bloom, and then we were watching it already past spent bloom the whole time i came over here and got this layer little kind of cleaned up so proud of myself for keeping it clean what we're going to do today i uh, found this deep three gallon pot and then just a standard three gallon pot i like this one better for tomatoes because we want to plant at least half of this stem tomatoes are one of the only plants that i want you guys to plant deep when you do get them anything else i always preach you know plant it kind of high up but if you can see these hairs, and I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not, but if you see these hairs, all of these will turn into roots. I mean, you could bury up to 75% of the tomato, but as a rule of thumb, I always suggest about 50% of the stem is what you want to bury. So what we can go ahead and do is just take our little pruners and just remove these lower leaves because we don't want them to stay in the soil and bury them because then they might get fungus on them and... The, that's probably the biggest thing we're going to battle in the greenhouse is fungus because I have done this experiment in the past and I did it on a much larger scale so in my uh, 20 by 100 greenhouse I have done hydroponic tomatoes during the winter I planted 200 of a variety called trust uh, they're specifically bred for greenhouse growing in the winter they're very resistant to uh, things like fungus and they just can handle those cold damp temperatures and the experiment went well, although it was, uh, it was a lot of work. I did 200 of them, had them trained up to a cable system, and uh, we produced literally over one ton of tomatoes during the three month, or maybe it was four month winter period. Sold them all to the fresh market there in Augusta, Georgia. They were delicious, but it was a lot of work because you gotta think, you know, there's not a lot of light, so I had to hang lights in the greenhouse, and then two, there's no pollinators during the winter. So every day I had to walk through with this little vibrating wand, touch each flower set in order to pollinate them so we get good fruit production. Super cool project, but a lot of work. I don't think I ever want to do it again. It's so one of the most fun things I've, I've done and still lost money at it, but it was a neat project. So I know it's possible to grow tomatoes in the winter. It's just a little bit more difficult due to the low light conditions, not a lot of air move it, movement, and of course no pollinators. So fortunately here in this greenhouse, we do have this fan here that I found on Amazon. These are outdoor fans, they work great. I've got them all over the porch and all around the house. I'll put a link to this guy in the description below. But you see how wet and humid it can stay in here and those are ideal conditions for fungus. A fungus loves that cool, humid, very little air movement and it will eat a tomato plant in no time. So that being said, we'll get all the leaf litter out of the container. We're only going to do two of these. The others, we're just, going to, we're just going to chunk them because, well, we don't have space to grow any more of them. And we're just experimenting to see if we can grow 
That's a nice beef steak during winter. I'll just go ahead and dump our stout ollie mix into our deep three gallon. We'll go ahead and fill it almost all the way to the top. Leave about an inch or so so that water doesn't spill out. That should be good right there. And we'll go ahead and fill our standard three gallon pot about the same way, about the same amount full. And then we'll dump it all over my clean workbench. Come on out there. I like the looks of this stuff, man. It's nice and rich, not too fine, not too coarse, which is really important with tomatoes because they like a consistent moisture content. We'll go ahead and put our tag in so we don't forget what we've planted. And then what we're gonna do, pop him out of his container, give him a couple little squeezes. Oh yeah, he's got some nice white hair roots. Nice healthy little plant. Now I need to dig us a deep hole so that we can bury again at least 50% of the tomato. And we'll just slap him right on down in there. Let me show you guys before I bury him. So we got him tucked down in his hole right there. And we're simply just going to bring some soil up around this stalk and I think I'll go ahead and add a little bit more so we can get the soil up to about right here. We'll just add a few cups and there may... that should be good right there. I like that. Now we'll do the same thing over here. Go ahead and stick our hand down in there and make us a nice deep hole. Let's see which one we like. Um, since we're going to be sacrificing them we want to take the prettiest. I like this guy right here. He looks nice. Let me go ahead and squeeze him just like we did the other guy. Gently shake him. Oh yeah, man, look at that, that's healthy. Love to see those white hair roots like that. That means it's actively growing, sending out all of those little lateral roots. This thing should take off pretty quick. Something I forgot to do though is take off these first leaves. We're gonna go ahead and take this guy off as well again so we don't get any fungal issues and get started off on the wrong foot. I'm going to dig it down a little bit deeper, I think. And let's really sink this guy right here. Add a few more cups to fill him all the way up. Just like so. And he is done. We buried him a little bit more than 50%, but that's okay because we want a nice deep root system on these guys. And we're definitely going to have to be diligent on pruning them. We don't want a ginormous, really thick tomato bush. Again, due to we want that airflow to be able to move through these plants. So they're going to be a little bit leggy because there's not as much light, especially in this greenhouse because I have orchids and stuff in here. So it's kind of really shaded. So they're going to want to stretch, which is fine. Uh, you know, if we were out in the garden during summertime, I'd want them nice and bushy and dense or denser. Still want airflow to go through them. But in here, I just know that they're going to be leggy and I'm okay with that because that's going to give us the airflow that we need to get through them to help ward off any fungus. I think for right now, y'all, we'll probably leave them right here on the workbench because it's one of the brighter areas of the greenhouse right now. That way they can go ahead and get off to a good start. We'll come in and put a stake in them here in another week or so as they as they start to grow and then we're just going to cross our fingers that we can uh, we can success, successfully grow them during the winter. But I feel pretty confident we've done it before we can do it again and with gardening man it's just is how you learn. I've never tried to grow them in this greenhouse before so um, y'all follow along and we'll find out together if we can do it. Speaking of I need y'all's help so YouTube has initiated this new thing to when you say the word subscribe, the little subscribe button down there is supposed to light up, but I don't know if it's doing it. So if it does, when I say the word subscribe, y'all let me know in the comments if that thing actually lit up for you. I saw it on a video the other day. I was like, that's cool. Why do you do that? So I looked it up and uh, it's just supposed to automatically do it when you say the word subscribe. All right, I won't say it anymore. I promise. 
I will say this though, the more you know, the more you grow. I'll see you guys on the next video.